Welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is Mob Money Part 3. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company so far. If you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on all the social medias at murdycreative.co. If you're looking for links there in the top of our website, otherwise make sure to join our Discord as well. Links up there and in the bottom, or in the top, I should say, of the description below. So, Mob Money. Part 3. You know, I really hoped that there would only ever be a part one to this saga. And now we're on part three. And honestly, I actually don't know if it's going to be the last part of this saga, to be completely true. For those of you who don't know, who didn't get a chance to listen to Mob Money Part 1 or Mob Money Part 2, you should go listen to those. But on the off chance, I'm talking about borrowing money from Shopify Capital. Now, I have a lot of nice things to say about Shopify Capital. They don't require my credit score or my credit in the process, and that will become a factor in this conversation later, as I will tell you. They are currently loaning the company the money, not me personally. They have a very streamlined process for lending where you, they lend you the money. They give you the money as a bulk sum very quickly, within days normally. Sometimes it's even within 24 hours of you applying for the money. The amount that you are given is an X percentage. It's X number of dollars, and that is whatever percentage of repayment you would like to make in six months. And I'll get back to that in a second. So, for example, if you were going to make a million dollars a year, six months you would make 500000 hypothetically. Obviously, that's not necessarily true, but that's the hypothetical for these numbers. You'd make 500000 If you wanted to have your repayment, your daily forced repayment from Shopify to be 10%, you could borrow $50,000. So they would give you $50,000 today, and they would take 10% of your sales every day from now until the loan is paid off, plus a fee. Now, that fee is 8% of the total loan. Now, for those of you who are in the audience doing your back of the napkin math, what that means is that the actual rough annual percentage of return for them, the the interest rate is about 16%. Now, that's a significant interest rate. That's a very high interest rate. Now, it seems less high now that the interest rate from the banks and from the Fed and everyone is wildly higher than it used to be, but it's still a high interest rate. But it's not an interest rate per se, it's a flat fee. And they don't require you to pay it back in six months, they only require you to pay back, in this particular example, 10% of your daily sales. So if you do a lot less than $500,000 in six months, if you do $500,000 in a year, if your sales decline rapidly, then you would be repaying at a year. So the minimum they get back is an 8% return, because you are required to pay it back within 12 months, period. But it actually flexes. Now, that's actually a problem, theoretically, because that means that if you have a very quick repayment, if you have a really good series of months, you're forced to pay them 10% back, you actually pay it back much faster, which means that the interest rate is much higher by a percentage because it's a flat fee, regardless of whether you pay it back quick or pay it back fast, it's a flat fee. So, it doesn't work quite like interest, but it's... Close enough that we can compare it apples to apples if we kind of modify it a little bit. We have borrowed from Shopify twice and now a third time using the Shopify capital. The first time we borrowed a very large sum of money and it was at a 17% repayment of daily sales. And that was an enormous burden on us. And it was a bad decision. But because we made that bad decision, We ended up running short on cash by the end of it all because 17% of your daily sales, if you're not being profitable, even if you're just at break even, means that you're losing 17% a day to the payment of the capital back. So eventually it got to the point where we were out of cash and so we had to borrow again and that was what led us to mob money part two. Now that time we were able to borrow at 10% because we needed less money. So we were able to borrow at 10% and this time we're borrowing at 7% and even less money. So the good news is we are trending, I would say, in the right direction, where every time we borrow from Shopify, we're borrowing less money and we're paying it back at a a smaller interest rate, or not a smaller interest rate, I should say, a smaller daily forced repayment schedule. 
of our daily sales. Now, the money that we just borrowed will hopefully float us for the next couple of months. And I really don't like using that money because it's expensive. But it's cheaper than what we currently are using, which is my Discover card. And my Discover card is completely filled up to the brim with debt. There's no more money I can borrow from Discover. And it's my personal Discover card. So, the revolving utilization, for those of you who know anything about credit scores, a credit score is made up of multiple different factors. But one of the biggest factors is what your, quote, revolving utilization is. What that means is, how much money have you borrowed out of the total money that you can borrow? That's called revolving utilization. So, for example, if you've got, hypothetically, $20,000 credit card, and you borrow $10,000, your revolving utilization is 50%. And anything over 30 is considered very detrimental to your credit score. And right now, previously, previously, I, was, I, my, I had two credit cards open. One of them I did not use very often or at all, basically. And the other one was my Discover card. And the Discover card, I had basically completely filled up. And the other one, I basically had nothing on. And they were about the same. So my revolving utilization was about 50%. I just got a letter last month that the credit card that I didn't use had its credit card limit reduced to $500, which was significantly less than it was, what it was previously, because of inactivity. So now, for those of you looking at the numbers, you can start to see that the denominator, that $20,000, just got a lot smaller in this example, and it got, just went down to, for example, 10. So now my revolving utilization, without me spending a dime, went from, in the example, 50% to 100%, which really, really kills your credit score. And so, my credit score has been getting just pummeled. Now, because it's the first quarter and we're not making that much money, if anything, we haven't been very profitable at all, really. Really, Christmas is about the time we're profitable, and pretty much the rest of the year, we're just kind of sucking wind. But we're, doing on fi- we're working on fixing that, and I have a plan to fix that. I've said that before, but regardless, because my credit score is low, and because the, credit, the, debt, the Discover card is completely filled up, the only way to get my credit score back up is to pay off the Discover card. Now, before all of this, before I started using the Discover card, before I had the revolving utilization issues, my credit score was in the mids to high 700s. It was really good. I have really good credit, except for this whole situation with the Discover card and the revolving utilization issue has killed my credit score. So now we have to pay back the Discover card. Otherwise, my credit score is going to continue to just to decline and get pummeled. This is all made worse by the fact that the bank won't extend our line of credit, which has much better better interest rates at the moment. It has much better interest rates at the moment. They won't extend it any larger, despite the fact that it's based off our cash flows, and our cash flows are significantly higher than when they first established the line of credit. So theoretically, technically, we should be eligible for a lot more money for them to lend us a lot more money. But to do that, they have to do a hard credit check. And my credit score is going to come back much, much worse because of the Discover card. So now we're sitting here playing musical chairs. I hate financial musical chairs. It is one of my least favorite things, and I have to play that game so often, and I despise it. So we have to borrow the money from Shopify to pay back the Discover card. And then we have to hopefully wait a couple of months and hopefully not too many months for my credit to rebound. Once my credit rebounds, then and only then we can hopefully borrow again and extend the line of credit. However, there's a whole issue with that on the back end with with BMO, our current bank. And who knows if the line of credit will even come through. So because that's all going to take time, And because I can't necessarily guarantee that the next couple of months are going to be profitable, not only do I have to borrow enough money to cover the Discover card, I also have to borrow enough money that if we just broke even over the course of the next couple of months, we could make up the 10% difference that Shopify is going to take. So if we were just at break even, not including the Shopify money, Shopify is going to take 10%. So now not only do we need to pay off the Discover card in its entirety, we have to pay off, we have to borrow enough money to cover the rest of the current loan on the off chance that we don't get profitable fast enough. And then, hopefully, we will either be profitable enough to cover the 7% repayment that we have to pay back by the time we get to that point, when that starts up, or hopefully by that point, the line of credit will be extended enough that we will be able to cover any shortfall in that borrowing with the line of credit. 
And I really despise this game. And really what's coming down to is as soon as we get out of debt, we, we, I borrowed so much money and we used that money to expand the company and we made a huge leap in our re revenue that year because we borrowed a bunch of money. We bought a bunch of new equipment. We built, went to a bigger place. We did a big change. We grew. We really grew. But we weren't much more profitable. So you have to ask yourself, was it worth borrowing the money to grow to not be more profitable? And the answer is, well, technically, a larger company making a marginal change in its profitability will have a bigger net value positive on the bottom line in real dollars. For example, a $500,000 company that makes a 10% increase in its bottom line in its profitability is a $50,000. But a $1.5 million company that makes a 10% increase in their bottom line or 10% profitability is $150,000, right? So there's a certain level of say, well, is it better to have a bigger company that breaks even or a smaller company that breaks even? And the answer is probably a bigger company that breaks even, although it's a really reasonable argument to be had when we have an enormous amount of debt to get there. And paying back that debt is my first and only priority, to be honest, beyond obviously being profitable enough to pay back that debt and taking care of you, my customers. Obviously, we're going to make good products regardless. That's always the baseline. But long-term strategy-wise, paying back the debt is absolutely essential because we make, we, we spend so much of our time playing fi financial musical chairs, and I don't want to spend the time doing that. That's way too stressful. It's an enormous amount of emotional and mental stress on me because it's all in my name. All of this debt goes back to me. If the company, if the Murdy Creative Company, which is, by the way, an LLC, were to collapse, file bankruptcy, all of the loans are structured on purpose by the bank, by the way, so that Colin Murdy personally is responsible for them. So if this company collapsed, God forbid, and it won't happen, and I won't let it happen, but if it were to collapse, I'm going to be saddled with an enormous amount of debt, larger than a student loan debt by a far, for a long time. And the company is my best path to paying that off. In fact, it's really only the only reasonable path to pay it off. So here we are, continuing on. So the answer really is, we're taking the money, the mob money, for a third time because it's the right decision, because it's what allows us to continue to move forward. It's what allows us to continue to do the things that we need to do to get to that profitability. And there are things to do to get to that profitability. And once we get ourselves out of debt, and we will get ourselves out of debt, I am not going to go into debt more than maybe, maybe $10,000 to pay vendors back ever again. I say that now. We're going to have to clip this when I do it in the future at some point and throw it into that podcast, I guess. Anyway, I don't plan on it because this is an enormous amount of stress and it has been something that has been hanging over our heads for well over a year at this point. But here's the thing. We are making progress. The first loan was 17%. The second loan was 10%. This loan is 7%. We are making progress. We are moving in the right direction. The company is getting more and more profitable over time. We are fine-tuning the important things that need to get fine-tuned on the back end to make us work better, and we are working hard to develop better and more widely disseminated marketing platforms that allow for more traffic and more subscribers and more buyers and more rebuyers. And that, by the way, is one of the future podcasts that I'm going to talk about. We had a good meeting last week about that topic. And we are making progress in getting this to work. And we have a great product. We have an incredible product. In fact, we have a product that I believe firmly is the best in the market and is only getting better. We are continuing to innovate. We are continuing to launch new things. We are continuing to improve. And I'm excited about that. So for us, the answer is that we need to continue to exist long enough to make the continued improvements that we need to make to get us there. And that's why we have to borrow the money. Because existing is better than not. And there is no version of us existing without taking the money at the moment. So. Here we are. We are going to get ourselves out of debt. That will happen. Hopefully it will happen by the end of this year. More realistically, it will probably happen by the end of next year. We will be completely out of debt. And then we will probably use the profitability, the marginal profitability, by the way, because it's not going to ever be big money, I'm realizing. But you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the company not making big money. I'm okay with it being a little company that makes good money for what it is and is able to pay our debts and is able to pay our employees and is able to keep us running, right? We don't need, I don't need to be a Fortune 500 company. I'm comfortable being a good company that's small. And I'm realizing that that's what it's going to be, unfortunately, at least for the foreseeable future. 
but we will be a company that will be able to make enough profit to pay off our debts. And then that same profitability, we will then carry forward into putting money in the bank for the first time and actually having a little bit of margin. And then we will at that point be able to say, okay, what are big projects that we want to try then using the money in the bank rather than having to borrow more money from the bank? And we'll get there. We will. And it's been a learning experience the whole way. I mean, not a fun one, but it has been a learning experience. And obviously the macroeconomic circumstances of the environment right now aren't helping anything, right? That's not necessarily working in our favor, but I can't control that. So why worry about it, right? I can't, I can't change it. There's nothing I can do to fix it. So all I can do is do the best I can with the moment I've got and continue to have the company exist. And that's what I will do. Going back in time, knowing what I know now, would I have taken the money? That first large money, amount of money that got us in this mess, I think, in the first place. I think yes. I think I still would have. And I think it goes back to the thing I said earlier about it's better to have a, a company that's break even at a one and a half million dollars than a company that's breaking even at five hundred thousand dollars because a ten percent improvement in the one and a half million dollar company has a much bigger impact in the bottom line. And I don't know if we could have gotten where we got without that loan. In fact, I'm fairly confident we couldn't have gotten here without that loan. So yes, I would have gone, if I had the chance, I would go back and take that money, even knowing where it's taking us now and even knowing the stress that it has given us because we are a better company now than we were then. And that is in some ways related almost entirely and directly to that money. But who knows what the future holds? Only God. Thank you everyone though for supporting us. If you've got ideas other things that you think could help us, send them, comment them below on the YouTube, send us an email if you're listening on the podcast, text us at our phone number, 414-434-9001. I want to hear from you guys. I really do. I have a whole podcast around this particular topic that I want to get into later, but you guys are in many ways the best source of information for us. A lot of times we operate in a vacuum. We don't have a good answer as to why our customers did what they did or why they think what they think, and we need your input, and that helps us immensely. But more coming and soon, and a lot of fun things are coming soon. We got a lot of new stuff. In fact, by the time you're listening to this podcast, we may have launched a new product. And if you haven't, if we haven't launched that new product by the time you're listening to that podcast, it'll probably happen within 24 hours or 48. So new things are coming and exciting things are coming. So stay tuned. And on that note, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell to get notified of the latest podcast when we launch one. If you've got questions or concerns about your pod or your, excuse me, your product, reach out to us on our website, murdycreative.co. The main page has the contact form at the bottom. Reach out to us there or send us an email, sales at murdycreative.co, sales at murdycreative.co. We'd be happy to help. If you have a quick question, you want to place an order over the phone, call us, 414-434-9001. You can also text us at that number as well, 414, uh, excuse me, 414-434-9001. We're available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. A review can leave a hu- make a huge difference for us. People love to hear from other people about the products. In fact, they don't trust us at all to tell them the truth. They trust you to tell them the truth about the product. So if you've got the product and you love the product, leave us a review. Go to murdycreative.co slash review. You can also go to murdycreative.co slash leave a review. Both of those links will take you to the same place. You can leave us a review there on Google, by the way. That helps improve our SEO. That helps other people know us about us. And it's a really important thing. We have a rewards program, so definitely... Tell your friends all about this and you can get rewards for doing that. Go to the bottom left-hand corner of the website. There's a little rewards button there. You can learn all about the program. You can get stuff back for it. There's a lot of fun things. We're actually changing the rewards program to get all sorts of fun, cool things coming along. So stay tuned about that. But definitely uh, go check that rewards program and share with your friends and family. If you're looking for multiple things, binders, journals, folios, anything at all for gifts, for your employees, for your friends, for your boss, your coworkers, your enemies, I don't know. You can get them for anybody. Go check out the bulk discounts we have on our website. All you need to do is mix and match to your desire, put everything in your cart, and hit checkout. The automatic quantity in the cart will be detected, and the appropriate items will get the appropriate discount that will be associated with that item. It's all automatic. If for whatever reason you have questions, send us an email about that. We're happy to help. And you can get a custom engraved item with no minimum order quantities and no setup fees. You can get just one of something with a logo on it. So go to the website, go to any product, hit add custom logo. It'll take you to the customizer. You can pop that thing up. Once you get in there, you can add your logos. You can add text. You can resize, reposition, move everything around, and hit add to cart. That specific thing that you made is what we use to engrave. We don't have to do any editing of the file. It's wonderful. And so you can design it exactly as you'd like. Obviously, check out um, the TOS for more information about the copyright stuff that goes into that. Um, But we really appreciate those of you who do use the customizer to make it your own because we love helping to make that happen. It's usually a flat fee, by the way. 
there's no setup fees or anything. It's no minimum order quantities. It's a flat fee. It's normally $15, maybe 20, depending on what the size of what you're getting and everything that, that the customizer will automatically ad- apply the correct price for the correct size. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day. Goodbye.